look at venture capitalists. Yeah. Um, they invest in multiple companies, hoping that just one will pay off pays and it'll cover up the rest. Yeah. You mentioned uh, looking, you know, further in the future, not being so, you know, dr driven by the quarter. Short term. Yeah. Yeah. And reminded me of uh, it was actually Jeff Bezos that said this and, you know, was talking about how you build a company. And people always ask him, well, what do you look to build your company out? Like, how do you know what's what's going to change? Like, how do you do that? And mm -hmm. I think his response was, in a nutshell, it's like, that's pretty much not, I get asked that all the time. That's not the interesting question. The interesting question is, what's not going to change? And that's when you want to work with people who are long-sighted. They want, they, they are building something around, like, the fundamentals of things that won't change or that have a, slim possibility of changing yeah. and that's assuming we don't get any changes in the iras <laughs> that's what we're trying to uh, to do here is yeah. work around a proven <clears throat> model that changes slightly but not a whole lot and you can build a long-term portfolio or or um income based off of that right and like in, in our what, what we invest and in, what we our fund uh puts money into it's their short-term loans so people would say well is that long-term thought well yeah it is because the way we love our short-term loans the reason why we love our short-term loans is because we have the ability to to right the ship should anything happen outside the market and mm -hmm. gosh do things happen outside the market yes yeah. every day so we like the ability to be able to change whatever direction we're in because we're in short-term loans we can easily do that by yeah. changing our products I mean, and think about like we switched from higher end properties to more affordable properties made a huge difference and then mm -hmm. also this year we have not really switched but we because our our loans are such short term we were able to allocate more money into emerging opportunities like new construction mm -hmm. uh storage facilities mm -hmm. um you know, apartments, indu apartments, industrial conversions, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that, because fix and flips, there's not as many as there used to be. That's right. But it, if if we were in longer term stuff, we wouldn't have been able to correct that in such a short time. Period. That's right. That's yeah. right. That makes a huge difference for us. Well, <clears throat> investors and we'll and in this case, we'll we'll make the uh, jump over or the leap over to borrowers. Um, a borrower wants certainty long term. And the problem with the companies are you're locking yourself into a long-term contract right? where things change mm -hmm. over time and you mm -hmm. need to have that flexibility to be able to maneuver based on uh, the new information. That's right. So what banks have done, uh, typically commercial banks uh, on the commercial side is that you always had to have a balloon uh, in those loans yeah. or, uh, or back, back in the day, because I've been doing mortgages for a long time, back when they first invented electricity, <laughs> um, we, we had a... Uh, Was that when they were fighting over <laughs> alternating current versus had, direct? <laughs> we, we, didn't, we didn't have balloon notes. We had call option mm -hmm. notes. Yeah. Where Every five years. At, or three. You mm. can set it up anytime, any way you wanted to. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of a certain term, you had the option as the lender to call the note due, uh, modify the note in case it, you know, the rates went up or right. leave it the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, that way it protected the lender from market changes. Right. And at the same time, you're not really uh, telling the borrower that they have to requalify for the loan. Yeah, now, sure. Again, they still have the, option to call it due. I'm not seeing those kind of loans out there anymore. Are no. you? I did one of those about five years ago. And that's the last time I, I mean, not, I've only done one and, and it was, well, I think it's a great tool. And it, it is. It still should be. Out it there. is a great tool. Using well, it. they'll probably come back. Well, because everybody's doing what everybody else is doing right now with yeah. the non-qualifying lenders out there, they have to compete with each other because those rates are so good. Well, and, and rates have been falling for so mm -hmm. long. I mean, a call option. Now there's other reasons to do a call option besides just uh, an interest rate adjustment. There's all kinds of things that can happen in the market, but the rates have been going down for so long. 
I think from the interest rate side, it probably didn't make sense to do a call option. Now that we think the forecast is to go yeah, back up, going to go back up, mm -hmm. I think they're probably going to make a lot more sense for a yeah. lot of people. But unfortunately, it seems like the lenders that are out there, the pop, big popular strong ones, are the last ones to make the changes. <laughs> Doesn't it seem that way? It's it's hard to turn a cruise ship. It, it, you're yeah. right. Well, here, here's another. You're thing. right. They've been talking about changing the index for the arms for. How long? You mean from, from having it depend on one measurement to another? Yes, because like the, from the LIBOR, LIBOR. Oh. was manipulated, <laughs> what, 10 years ago? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Maybe even longer. Are than they that. still using that? Everyone's still using the LIBOR. Well, not everyone, index. but most, yeah, pretty much all. Yeah, well, yeah. most of them. Not, <laughs> not everyone, gonna, but all of them. <laughs> most of them. They use that or they'll use Prime. Yeah. You know, one yep. or two.